If you love sourdough, I think you're gonna love these three simple recipes, pizza, pie crust, and pancakes. Three staples that I never buy from the grocery store anymore, and you don't have to either because these recipes are simple. We're gonna start with pizza. This is a chewy, dense, delicious pizza dough. I'm using a fresh ground hard white wheat. That is my favorite here, but any kind of all-purpose bread flour will work. Three tablespoons of salt and just get that mixed in with the flour. One to two cups of warm water. A freshly milled wheat and a whole wheat will drink a lot more water than a white all-purpose flour. One fourth cup of olive oil and one cup of fully fermented sourdough starter. This should come together to be a pretty uniform, slightly sticky dough. You definitely don't want any dry spots, but it should be pretty shaggy. You could leave it at that point, but I like to add a little bit of extra strength to the dough at this point, especially when I'm using a fresh ground flour. So I do a little bit of kneading and just really gentle kneading here. I'm just using a little bit of flour to help it not stick. But see, I'm getting a little bit of breakage on the skin here and we don't want that. So that's a sign that I need to just pause, let it rest. I'm gonna dust it, let it take a second to rest. I'll give it just a few more turns and then it'll be ready. Just set it back in its bowl, cover with a wet tea towel, some plastic wrap, whatever you like to use, and set it out at room temperature to ferment overnight or about six to eight hours. The next morning, we're just gonna turn this out and get it separated into two parts. Each one of these is gonna be lightly shaped. This adds a little bit of structure and just makes the final shaping a lot easier. Now I'm just gonna set these aside. I'm gonna actually put them in the refrigerator for at least a couple hours, but up to a couple of days. This is their final proof. They're going to really develop their flavors and finish fermenting here. I love a fully fermented sourdough because it's so much easier on my digestive system, but it's also just delicious. Now take these out of the fridge at least an hour before you want to bake them. Let them warm up a little bit and then start shaping. So pushing down in the middle, working your way outward to create a little ring for your crust. And then you can either lift it up by the ring or stretch it over the back of your hands and lightly stretch. You can go thin or thick in whatever kind of crust you like. Just be careful not to tear it here. Slow and steady is the way. I'm gonna put it in a cast iron skillet today, but you could do this on a pizza stone or you know, however you like to do it is gonna work fine. Now get your toppings prepped.
Whatever kind of sauce you want to use, pesto, white sauce, tomato based, I'm using a kombucha barbecue sauce here. And then just load it up with your veggies and whatever toppings you're using. Top it off with some mozzarella or whatever your favorite cheese is. And then put it in the oven at 400 for 25 minutes. There we have it, a beautiful fully fermented sourdough pizza loaded with all the good toppings. This is such a good nourishing, delicious, hearty lunch, snack, dinner. It's one of our absolute favorites. The leftovers for this pizza also keep really well for up to three or four days. Mm. <laughs> Next up we have pie crust. It is really easy to work with this pie crust and there's no cold cutting butter involved. Three cups of flour. I like to use a soft white wheat here and a teaspoon of salt one cup of melted butter or melted lard, and then two thirds cup of sourdough starter. Just mix this all together. For a sweet pie crust, you could add up to one fourth cup of some kind of sugar of choice. I really like to use coconut sugar if I'm doing something like an apple pie. Set this aside to ferment at room temperature for around two to six hours. Then divide it in half. This is enough pie crust for either one fully covered pie or two open top pies. Get these kind of worked out into somewhat thin discs, like a little under a quarter inch I have found to be just about right. put your disc in a zip top bag. And I like to put both my rounds in the same bag. So I use a little piece of plastic or parchment paper between the two of them and just stick them in the same bag. Now these can go in the refrigerator for up to four days. They will get more and more sour the longer that they are in the refrigerator. But this is also really convenient for kind of prepping ahead of time. Now, today I'm making up my favorite 12 egg quiche. This is something that I make at least weekly. We love a good quiche, and that's just 12 eggs, a little spoonful of mustard, a little bit of raw goat milk. Whisk that all together. a little bit of salt, pepper, whatever spices float your boat on any given day. You can also toss in all sorts of veggies here. It's really flexible. I'm making this one with my three-year-old in mind because she asked for some eggy pie and she does not want green things in it. So we're just doing some mozzarella, salt and pepper, keeping it really basic today. You need to take your pie crust out of the fridge about an hour before you want to roll out the crust. Mm. 
Dust each side with a little bit of flour just so your rolling pin doesn't stick. This crust is so much easier to work with than a lot of the traditional cold cut butter ones I've used in the past. It's maybe not quite as flaky, but it's really very tender. Measure it to make sure it's the right size, and then flip it into your pie pan or skillet. Get it tucked into your pie pan or skillet. I like to use my knuckles to just kind of go around and make sure the edges are pushed in, and then I just trim off this top. You could also crimp the top, whatever is your preference. I save these little scraps to bake separately and my kids really love that. We make little like pie crust cookies. In with whatever kind of filling you're using and then bake according to your filling directions. This quiche bakes at 350 for 45 minutes and I let it cool in the oven for about 15 minutes before I take it out. That way it doesn't collapse. This can be served warm or cold, and again, it makes fantastic leftovers. I love it with a little bit of garlic kraut on top. Mm. Last but not least, we have pancakes. We eat these all the time. They are so simple to whip up from scratch and the perfect way to use up your discard. All we need is some active, fully fermented sourdough starter, milk, egg, a little bit of salt, optionally some sweetener, and baking soda. I'm using a rice starter. Any kind of sourdough starter will work great here. A little bit of salt, a little bit of sugar, and one egg. Mix that all together until it's fully combined. Then add just a little bit of milk or water to get it to the right pancake batter consistency. I don't keep my sourdough at a consistent hydration, so this changes day to day, week to week for me. And then half a teaspoon of baking soda. Melt a little bit of butter onto your favorite skillet. And fry up your pancakes. Pancakes are always good with maple syrup, but more often than not, we top ours with some homemade jam and a little bit of yogurt. Bon appetit, my friends. I hope you guys give these three recipes a try. Of course, let me know what you think in the comments and if you do make them, I'd love to hear about it. If you enjoyed this video, remember to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and share this with a sourdough loving friend. All right, I'll see you guys next week.